Today we've got a mechanical build. I'm going to make a pug milling attachment. I'll explain later on what that actually is. For now, I need some plates. So we've got all the plates for the gearbox housing here. To clean out the plasma cut edges, I've just taken it to the bandsaw. Let's weld these together. That's essentially what we're making. Using the angle grinder, I did some weld prep, and now we're good to go. <clears throat> yes, idiot put this plate on backwards. Let's tree this up over at the mill. Before we go further, what the hell is a pug mill? A pug mill is one of these machines. This is used with clay. Essentially clay goes in, is squashed down into an auger, and then it homogenizes, mixes it all up, and then it outputs a billet of clay out the other end for use. My mum is a ceramic sculptor and makes great use of the pug mill. The problem is trying to fit clay into the machine. The device I'm making will make this process much faster and easier. Let's tree this up over at the mill. And we're back at the bench. So I showed this to mum, and there's a couple of things that need tweaking. So I was gonna divide this, have a gearbox, and this is your clay chute. That's not good enough. She wants something even bigger than this in order to easily be able to get a full bag of clay in and more of a mixing arrangement rather than a choppy blendy arrangement that I was going for. So there you go. Let's actually go and mill this now. Now I need to true this all up. Now if we look at this thing, nothing is square or straight. You can think of this like a casting. Now I really want two reference surfaces on the outside here. Even if I machine this straight and flip it around, things are still gonna be wibbly wobbly. I'm gonna take one of these flattest sides. So I think if I mount it on one, I might be able to skim off the top. There's too much movement in this, in this position. So I'm gonna switch over to horizontal milling. I need to pay attention to my feed direction, moving the workpiece this way, so that this leading edge is pushing this down. To make this easier to handle, it makes sense to mill the bottom first, and then I can flip this around on that bottom surface. Let's flip this around and work on the other sides. Each time I position this, I'm indicating off one reference surface, and this is to try and achieve maximum parallelism and squareness. I need to put some holes through this for some shafts, and I'm opting to use annular cutters. Every operation is measured off the same reference base, and hopefully this means I've got some consistency throughout this job. I need to project these holes out to this other side. I could try and make a big long extension to drill these in the same setup. It's gonna flex a fair bit over the distance, so not a good idea. So I'm gonna flip this around and do the other side. So back at the welding bench, I need to weld another compartment on here that forms a gearbox. And that seems crazy. I've done all this machine work, I've gotten this all squared up, and now I'm gonna weld something to it and distort it. Once I've got a gearbox on the end here, I'm not gonna be able to drill this. These holes don't need to be too precise, they're just clearance holes, but I want them to be pretty close. And back to the mill we go. I'm putting some parallels down and resting this on the reference face, just to make sure I know for certain I'm touching where I want to. 
Again, I'm milling the bottom first, so I can flip this around and do all the other faces. All right, let's see how flat we got this. Okay, this is overkill, but out of interest. We'll blue the surface plate and we'll have a look at this guy. There you can see the blue, so let me highlight it for you. So that's cool, this tells me a few things. I don't want to clamp in this corner, and that's what I saw earlier with the rocking. Pretty much anywhere else, all good. Okay, we've got the housing for all this. Now we need some shafts to go in here. I'm going to rough mice this to size with the chuck and the tailstock support. And then for the final operations, I'll turn this between centers. Okay, so I've got a shaft. The finish isn't brilliant due to chatter. I've got the finish nice where required. The fit of this is for some gears to go on here. The rest of this is covered in a stainless steel sheath. So it doesn't need to be too precise. I have made a mistake though. The diameter of this end piece. This shaft needs to fit into this reduction gearbox. When I measured this, I measured the input. I should have been measuring the output. So we're gonna have to bush this. With the bush installed, I put the shaft between centers again and turned it down to the final diameter. This is the clay mixing area and this is gonna be a gearbox. So I guess we need some gears. These are blanks that are gonna be made into gears. I'm gonna mount these in a chuck and bore them out. Then I'm gonna install these on an arbor. Some of the gears are able to free spin and these have bronze bushings pushed into them. Using this arbor lets me turn the entire outside diameter down to the right size for gear cutting. So I've got a bunch of gear blanks. That must mean Gear cutting time. I'm using the same arbor as before in my dividing head. I've made sure to indicate this completely true in Y and Z. When I drive this tailstock into the end here, I've done a check and made sure it doesn't tweak this over and we're all good. This is probably the first time in history that I've considered clearance in this area. So we should be all good.
and stop what you're doing. So what did we do wrong? This outer diameter is sized for a 32 tooth gear and idiot wrote 34 tooth on the plan. So the spacing of these teeth is not right. This has its bronze bush pushed into it and there's a fair bit of work already invested into this. So I want to try and recover this if I can. I think I can turn this down to the root of these teeth and then to the next appropriate gear diameter and then we'll make it based on that. This section here is going to be part of a dog clutch and what it means is these teeth are going to be cutting into this dog clutch ever so slightly. It's not a drama, it just doesn't look very nice. Okay, now that we've got this, we can take it back to the mill and try and cut this again. Now to cut teeth. And we need 26 factorial. That's a lot. One, two. 22, 23, 24. Yeah, it's one of those days. So the screw up this time, I read the wrong section out of my dividing chart here. And before you ask, no, I can't really use this. Oh scrap gods, we offer this gift up in hopes that we may find future parts of use to us. Long may we scavenge. On the plus side, I was able to make the gear to the original plan. And then I had a lot of deburring to do. These gears need locking onto a shaft, and I'm gonna do this with set screws. So I'm gonna put two set screws in here at 120 degrees apart. That way we get three points of contact. I'm using an end mill to add a little spot face on the curve. And yes, this isn't a drill chuck. I'm only adding a small spot face. Calm down. I buy my oddball tap drill sizes separately. You don't need a 0.1 increment drill set, just get the individual drills. And if you're only buying one or two, you can afford to get good quality. I personally use Sutton. Let's have a look at how this goes together. Each of these gears do have a certain spot they've got to go. There's obviously a future shaft for this gear that needs to go in here. I'd probably better explain the design intent with this because why would you start the video that way? We've got this 25 to one reduction gearbox. Motor obviously bolts on the outside, and this feeds into our shaft here. So this shaft's gonna spin slowly. Attached to both of these shafts is blendy mixing things. This is the clay area, it'll all be stainless. All right, let's look at this gearbox section. There's two modes of operation with this. There's gonna be a sliding dog clutch in here that'll either engage these gears or these gears. So essentially, if we've just got this, we've got counter-rotating shafts. Normally these two mixing blades will drive counter-rotating and force the clay down. If you slide the dog clutch the other way, these will rotate in the same direction. We'll get more of a one of these. So it'll be more of a mixing arrangement. And if worse comes to worse, the motor will be reversible. We'll see how it performs. I don't even know if this is gonna work. There's still a fair bit of work that needs to go into this. This is probably a good point to leave it. Catch you on the next one.